lift up your two hands wherever you are please let's worship our maker is the king of kings the lord of lords he has preserved us till today let us worship him the incomparable god if i were you i would wave my two hands and say lord i worship you you are the controller of the heaven and the earth you are the one who always have the final say. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, please, I want a louder amen. I have been mandated by the Redeemer's men to preach on a topic titled Building Kingdom Man. Building Kingdom Man. In my own way, I want to change it to building kingdom people. Since we also have women in the house, we can still retain the topic if we are using man in generic sense. If we are using man to refer to human being, whether kingdom people or kingdom man, the topic is building kingdom people. Let someone shout hallelujah. Father, as we go into your word, go with us and bless us by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. I want us to start by reading Romans 14. Romans 14, verse 17. Building kingdom people. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Are you there? Let's read it together. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I want us to read again the only chapter of Jude. Jude has just one chapter. Jude, we are reading verse 20. Jude the only chapter, and we are reading verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Let me add verse 21. Keep yourself in love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. When we are talking about building kingdom people, the first question that readily comes to mind is, whose kingdom or which kingdom are we talking about? The question becomes pertinent because when you look at the operations in the world, you will discover that there are two major kingdoms controlling the world. The kingdom of the devil and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. There are two major kingdoms controlling the world. When Jesus Christ was using his terminology to describe this kingdom in Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, 21 to 23. Luke 11, 21 to 23, he called them the stronger kingdom and the strong kingdom. The stronger kingdom refers to the kingdom of God 
why the strong kingdom refers to the kingdom of the devil. If as you ask you trace straight away, whose kingdom do you belong to? Some of you don't know. If you know the kingdom you belong to, I want you to please answer me. Whose kingdom do you belong to? Say it loud and clear. Say it with confidence. So the kingdom I'm talking about today is the kingdom of God. When we are talking about building kingdom people, I'm talking about building the kingdom or building the people of the kingdom of God. When we are talking about kingdom, a kingdom, the word kingdom is made up of two words, king and domain. The word kingdom is a shortened form of king and domain. In other words, when you are talking about a kingdom, you are talking about the domain of a king. Am I communicating? And you will agree with me that the domain of one king is different from the domain of another king. For example, the domain of Governor Obasaki is different from the domain of Governor Amosu. Am I communicating? If Governor Obasaki should rise up today and say, I hereby decree, let there be coffee from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It can only happen in a dual state. It will not happen in Ogun state because its domain does not cover Ogun state. Am I communicating? But when we are talking about the kingdom of God, we are talking about the domain of the almighty God. And I want to put it to you that God has a kingdom. I thought you would say yes. I said God has a kingdom. Of course, the head of his kingdom is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in every kingdom, there is a culture. What do I say? Every kingdom has its own culture. If you want to divine culture, you discover that you can divine culture as the way of life of, the, a, of a particular people. The Benin people, in those days when we were studying the people of the whole Benin Empire, their culture was different from the people from old or your empire. Every culture has its own way of life. I don't know whether you are with me. Every kingdom has its own culture. So therefore, if you want to build kingdom people, if you want to build the people of the kingdom of God, you need to make them cultivate or the culture of God's kingdom. And that is where I'm going. I just want to tell you some of the culture of kingdom of God that you need to cultivate. If people cultivate this culture, then we will begin to build the people of that kingdom. Let someone shout hallelujah. Some of you will remember that when Moses ran away from the land of Egypt, after he killed an Egyptian, and the following day he was trying to reconcile between the two Hebrews that were fighting. And one of the Hebrews said, do you want to kill me the way you killed the Egyptian? He fled. When he fled to the wilderness, he met daughters of Jethro and he assisted them in feeding the flock of their father. So when those ladies got home and their father said, ah, you came home very quickly today, what happened? Those ladies said, an Egyptian helped us. Was Moses an, an Egyptian? But the reason why they claimed that an Egyptian helped us was because Moses was wearing an Egyptian robe. They saw him in the way of the Egypt and that is why they addressed him as an Egyptian. If you want to build kingdoms people, the people of the kingdom of God, you need to imbibe the way of life of the kingdom. I'm not talking about the kingdom of the devil now. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. So I will mention some of the culture of the kingdom that you need to imbibe so that you can be a giant in the kingdom. Number one, 
The culture of the kingdom of God is a culture of righteousness. I want you to tell your neighbor, it's a culture of righteousness. That is why Romans 14, 17 tells us that the kingdom of God is not in meat and in drink, but in what? In righteousness. If you want to develop as a giant in the kingdom of God, you need to cultivate the habit of righteousness. What do we mean by righteousness? Righteousness simply means living a holy life, living a godly life, forsaking the way of sin. In the world we are today, righteousness is becoming unpopular. People think if you want to make it fast, people think if you want to get to the top easily, you have to forsake the way of righteousness. No. But if you want to develop as a giant of his kingdom, you need to cultivate the culture of what? Of righteousness. Tell your neighbor, always be righteous. May I appeal to all men in the house, if you want your wife, your children to follow the way of God, you have to lay the example of righteousness. If as the head of the family, you are teaching your children how to tell lies, I can assure you, not only will your wife tell lies, all your children will grow up to be liars. There was a time my wife and I, we traveled to United Arab Emirates, Dubai. When we got to Dubai, because we didn't know the way, we hired a guide. And the guide happened to be a Nigerian. So when we were talking to the guide, the guide said, he said something to us that touched my heart. He said, Daddy and Mommy, I'm a Nigerian. I came here thinking that maybe if God assists me, I will be able to make it. I said, why didn't you stay in Nigeria? He said, ah, I don't think we will ever make it in Nigeria. And I asked this boy, why? He said, while I was younger, my father was working with railway corporation. That every day, my father would steal the property of railway corporation and he would bring it home. That every day. So he said, I grew under a thief as a father. That boy told us. He said, I was wondering, even though I couldn't talk, what kind of father is this that was teaching us how to be stealing? So what kind of legacy are you living for your wife? Are you living for your children? So the culture of the kingdom is a culture of what? Righteousness. I want everybody to say righteousness. Say it louder. Righteousness means to be godly, to do that which God wants you to do and live that which God does not want you to do. An example of a man who followed the culture of righteousness is Joseph. When Joseph found himself in the house of Potiphar, according to Genesis 39, if you begin to read it from verse 1, he was faithful, he lived holy. No wonder after some times when Potiphar's wife began to toast, toast Joseph, he said, young man, you are very handsome. I even prefer you more than my husband. Joseph said, how can I commit this evil and sin against my God? Do you know, if it were to be some of us who would say, God, see me see trouble. I didn't go after my august wife. I was sitting down gently and this miracle came pursuing me. Is that a miracle? Some of us will rationalize it and justify it and say, God, you see now, blood and water flow in my way when my august wife began to pressurize eh, eh, me every time. That is why I fell. But the boy did not do it. Even though he landed in prison, all the same, he still became great because he cultivated the culture of righteousness. Let me tell your neighbor, cultivate the culture of righteousness. Say it loud and clear. Say it again, say it again. Another culture you need to cultivate if you want to develop in the kingdom of God is the culture of love. I want you to say love. Say it loud and clear. In the kingdom of God there is love. But you know in the kingdom of the devil there is no love. Even though in the kingdom of the devil they are united. 
Unfortunately, in the kingdom of God, we are not united. May God have mercy on us. But in the kingdom of the devil, they are united. It is not love that united them. Do you know what unites them? The evil they want to do. They are united because they want to bring you down. But in the kingdom of God, there must be love. Love is the ability to take care of others. But unfortunately, in the household of God today, there is no love. So tell your neighbor, show love to another. Whether he or she wants to hear or not, help me tell him, tell her. Say, show love. Say it again, say, show love. And there are some men in the house, they will abandon their wife, abandon their children, and yet they will begin to show love to other people. If you are showing love as a man, let it begin with your members of your household. Women, am I talking sense? Charity begins where? Charity begins at home. If you have money, let your wife enjoy part of your money. If you have money as men, let your children know that you have money. But there are some men, when they arrive at home, everybody, wife will scatter, children will scatter. They will say, the lion of our house, the lion of the tribe of our family has come. Everybody will be looking for where they will hide. That is now how to build kingdom men. Your wife should be happy that honey has come back. Even your children should be happy that daddy has come back. Am I communicating? Show love. Even in the church of God, when others do not have, show love to them. You cannot claim that you love me when I don't have food to eat and you are wasting food. Am I communicating? If I come to you as my brother and I tell you I'm hungry, hunger is killing me, the solution to my problem is not let us pray. Am I communicating? It's not let us pray. You hide the bowl of fiber you are eating before I came in and I tell you I'm hungry, you are saying let us pray. What you should have done is to bring out the bowl of fiber and ask me to wash my hand and join you. In the household of God, let us show love. Let us love one another. The culture of the kingdom is a culture of what? It's a culture of love. Love your wife, love your children, and then you love your neighbor. Let someone shout hallelujah. I can't hear you hallelujah. So I want to challenge you. This love must be shown, especially by men. It is not by accident that God has made you the head of the family. I want all the men to say yes. But you are not the head by the word of mouth. To, to that your headship, there attach a lot of responsibilities. In fact, the Bible says that anyone who cannot provide for his house is even worse than who? It's worse than an infidel. I pray for all our men, whatever you will need to take care of your responsibility, the kind of money that will disgrace your responsibility, God will provide for you. Yeah. Number three, our culture is a culture of faith. I want you to say faith. Yeah. It's a culture of faith. If you want to develop your spiritual muscle, you want to develop as a member of the kingdom, you must live by faith and not by sight. Tell your neighbor, live by faith and not by sight. Four times God said it in the scripture that the just shall live by the just shall live by what? Is it shall live by sight? The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 4, Romans 1 17. You see there, the just shall live by faith. What is faith? Faith is believing that God is able to do that which He has promised to do. Can he fail? You are not answering me. Has he failed you before? He cannot fail. Faith is believing that God is able to do that which he has promised to do. Therefore, put your trust in him. Don't live by human reasoning. Some of us live by science. You are to live by what? By faith. Put your trust in God. He will never put you to shame. If you cannot exhibit faith, you cannot develop in the kingdom. When people like that, their boy, that their boy is saying that God is building an auditorium like the city of Ibadan for him 
He's talking with what? With faith. I know years ago he said God is building an auditorium like the city of Ibadan for him. That when he will be making an altar call inside the auditorium, people will be bringing, they will be using cars, vehicles to bring people to the altar. Even though it has not started happening, but something of such has been happening now. Have faith in God. You are to live by what? By faith. Do you know that by faith you are not going to crash? I can't hear your yes. I said by faith you will not crash. By faith you will survive in Edo State. By faith, you will survive in Nigeria. By faith, that promise of God will come to pass. I said it will come to pass. Lift up your right hand and say, I believe God. Say, I believe God. It is not possible for you to be ashamed. It is not possible. Because if you have faith in God, if you trust him, it will surely do it. So it's a kingdom of faith. No wonder the disciple cried to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. You need to work on your faith. That is why I read that Jude chapter 1, 20. That said, you need to build your faith. You must build your what? Your faith. Another point is to say that it's a culture of non-compromise. Culture of what? Non-compromise. I discovered that if you want to build a kingdom people or if you want to develop yourself, you must learn not to compromise. A lot of things are happening around us that will make you compromise your faith. Tell your neighbor, don't compromise. That is why I love and I have been praying for that, uh, I have forgotten her name now, one of the Dapshi girls who said she would never compromise his faith. When they ask her to renounce Christianity and compromise her faith, I'm sure you had the news. The lady said, no. That tell my mother, tell my father to keep on praying. I will not compromise my faith. But there are some of us, there are some ladies now, they compromise their faith because they need job. Some compromise their faith because of one thing or the other. It's not going to last. Learn from Daniel. When Daniel was in the land of Babylon, Daniel 1 8, the Bible says that Daniel proposed in his heart, Daniel 1 8, not, defi not to defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. The registrar of the University of Babylon told Daniel, Ah, if you don't eat this food that is sacrificed to idol and you become lean, the king will kill you. He said, No. Give me ordinary beings. And at the end of the day, the Bible says that the countenance of Daniel was fairer and fatter than those children that were eating the food sacrifice to Aldo. If it were to be some of us, say, oh, blessed be God. Blessed be God. You are eating polluted food. You are saying, blessed be God. You are eating poisoning. You are, poison. you are saying, blessed be. But he didn't compromise. So it's a kingdom of non-compromise. Whatever you have been, you stand on it. Let someone shout hallelujah. That is why the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Shall be you read it? It's not what? It's not bread and butter. It is not every time everything will be rosy. There may be challenges, but if you make up your mind not to compromise, you will overcome the challenges. I thought someone would say yes, sir. Do you think it was so easy for the three blue boys? When Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow to my hand, I will roast you. He told them. And those boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, Oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We have made up our mind not to compromise. If he's able to deliver us, fine. If he's not able to deliver us, we have, decided, we have agreed to roast. How many of us can do that? He said, no problem. We will see whether he will deliver you or you will roast. He increased the, 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 the temple of the fire. In fact, those who threw them into the fire died. But before they landed in the fire, the fourth man was already waiting for them. And at the end of the day, they were promoted because they didn't compromise. In what ways have you compromised your faith? God is talking to you. You better change your way. It's a culture of non 
compromise. Let me mention one or two more and we begin to close. It's a culture of giving and sacrifice. If you want to build kingdom people, kingdom people must know that one of the culture of the kingdom of God is a, is a culture of what? Giving and sacrifice. To be part of the kingdom, you must be ready to give. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, it says, Be not deceived, whatsoever a man swear, he shall do what? He shall reap. One of these days, I will, going to, I will preach on the law of harvest. It is whatever you sow, you will reap. If you sow in Naira, you will reap in Naira. If you sow in dollar, you will reap in dollar. If you sow fake, you will reap fake. That is why the Bible says that if you sow wind, you are going to reap what? What wind? But it, it goes even beyond the issue of money. You can sow your talent. Tell your neighbor, sow your talent. Some of us are gifted. God has deposited potential into us. Are you using it for God? The first day I, I, I saw a sister in this church handling the video camera, I discovered that the sister was very committed in handling it. Then I, I called her. I asked her one or two questions. I discovered that she was just using her talent for God. She was not on the payroll. But yet, God has loaded you with gift. He has loaded you with potential, but you are not using it for God. All you have been doing, don't be annoyed, is that some of us, we have been warming benches all the time. May that not be your portion. I can't hear your amen. amen. You need to sacrifice to the things of God. Today, God himself is reaping souls all over the world because he gave his only begotten son. You can give your talent, you can give your time. Look at these people. They sang this morning, we are all blessed. Were you not blessed when they sang? Do you think they just woke up from their bed this morning and started singing? They must have come for practice. And yet, they are not on payroll. Sacrifice. Is a kingdom of sacrifice. There are things you can do. If all of us here are ready to sacrifice the way God wants us to do, I can assure you, within the next one or two weeks, on Sunday like this, this the, the whole place will, will fill up and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I said, God will help us in Jesus' name. As I close, let me add this to it. This kingdom is a kingdom or spiritual warfare. It's a kingdom of what? Because there is an opposite kingdom, which is the kingdom of the devil. The kingdom of the devil usually launches attack on the kingdom of God. Therefore, it's a kingdom that, that is the kingdom of God is made up of prayer warrior. If you cannot pray, you have gone. Am I communicating? It's a kingdom of prayer warriors. As a father, you must be able to pray for your wife and stand in God for your children. I pray for all our men. You won't bury your wife. They are not saying amen. You will not bury any of your children. I said you will not bury your wife. You will not bury any of your children. But you have to stand in God for them. You have to stand in gap. The enemy is throwing arrow, but it's a kingdom of warfare. You need to stand up in the night, do prayer, and pray for your family. Prayer is very, very essential. When you begin to do all this, then you will develop your spiritual muscle. The enemy will see you and do what? And run. I, once again, I want to congratulate all men in Region 13 for the success of their Redeemers Men Convention of this year. I pray that God will make your family to be a family of peace, a family of joy, and a family of prosperity. But if you can work on all these things I've mentioned, I can assure you, your family will surely develop. Please rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Are we ready to pray? Lift up your two hands and shout, Jesus. Jesus. Is that all you can do?
Shout Jesus. Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Now I, you are going to pray. You will say, My father, my father. I'm still not comfortable with the way you are praying. I say, my father, my father. I commit my family into your hand. Every arrow the enemy is throwing at my family. I decree back to sender. I decree every member of my family will do your will and they will serve you. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Say, my father and my God, I pray for my wife. I pray for all my children. I pray for all those who are living with me. Every arrow, every bullet that the enemy is throwing at them, I say back to sender. In the name of Jesus, back to sender. You better go ahead and pray. Back to sender. I decree my family will serve God. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your two hands and say, My father, my father. Every seed of ungodliness, every seed of unrighteousness in my life, in the life of my children, in the life of my spouse, or put it in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Go ahead and pray. Every seed of ungodliness, every seed of unrighteousness, or put it to Lord. Or put it to Lord. Or put it to Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Two more prayers. I want you to pray and say, Father. Father. Say it loud and clear. Father. The grace not to compromise. Yes. The grace to stand on your word. Yes. At all times. Release unto me. Shall we pray. I don't want to compromise. I want to serve you till the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, all the men in the house, especially if you are married, you will mention the name of your wife and you begin to pronounce blessing on her. For example, you say, That's the name of my wife. If you have forgotten the name of your wife, you can use my own. Say, I decree in the name of Jesus in my house, you will flourish, you will blossom, you will prosper, you will shine. I want all men, mention the name of your spouse, mention the name of your children one by one, prophesy something good to them. Am I communicating? And those of us who are married, mention the name of your husband and say, this man you have given to me in my hand, he will not crash, he will not fall. Listen, if you are a youth in the house, your own prayer is that God, you will give me my friend. As when it is time for me to marry, I will not marry my enemy. I will marry my friend. I will marry someone who will pamper me. Someone who will take care of me. I will not marry a lion. I, I, are you ready? Everybody shout the name Jesus once and pray. Begin to pray. Whichever one that is applicable to you. Mention the name of your spouse. The name of your children and begin to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Say it louder, amen.